Jun just dropped the Crane M3S and the Weeble 3S. And if you were to ask me, which one should you get? The answer is a bit more complicated than I originally thought. Full disclosure, Jun sent these gimbals out to me, but they don't have any influence over this video and I will not be holding back. Thank you, Jun, I appreciate it. Let's get started out with the similarities between these two gimbals. First off, we have the ability to lock every single axis. Jun pioneered this and I'm really happy to see that they kept it going and it's a really nice feature. It absolutely helps to both balance the gimbal, being able to lock one axis while you get balance on the other one and then be able to complete that, unlock the next one, go to the next piece and balance that. So locking everything and balancing one at a time really helps out with saving some time. And it also makes storing a lot more compact. Both of these gimbals have a Bluetooth connection to where you can actually trigger stop and start recording from the gimbal itself. It's not a feature I really use much. I mean, the record button on the camera is like six inches away, but for certain angles, I can see this coming in handy. We have a customizable wheel in front of the gimbal to allow us to play with the roll or the pan. You can set that how you see fit. Both gimbals have a front trigger, which you can customize for certain functions. Both gimbals have a vortex, pan follow, time lapse, and motion lapse. They also both have a really nice display screen on the Crane M3S, that's a touchscreen. It's not a touchscreen on the Weeble 3S, but it's a nice display and it's come a long way. I had an old June gimbal years ago. You had to get everything accessed through the app. The app wasn't great. So being able to just set everything up through that touchscreen when you first get it is a really nice feature. They both have an attachable tripod stand. They have multifunctional connection cables where for supporting cameras, which you can go on their website and you can see all the supported cameras that are gonna work for this, but you can connect a cable from the gimbal to the camera and be able to control things like shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. It's not a feature that I use a ton. I think it's already enough steps getting the camera up and running on the gimbal in the first place and then having to attach a cable to be able to have some of those customizable features features when the camera's right in front of you. I don't think it's very necessary, but some people like it and it can be a nice feature and these gimbals do support that for the right cameras. Again, check the website. They both also have this quite bright little fill light, which you can change the temperature from something warm all the way to something cool. I don't really see the point of this and I, I do think that June might move away from this in the future, but if you like that feature, it's there for you. And moving into the main differences between these two gimbals, that display screen, the Crane M3S is touch, but the Weeble 3S, it's a nice Nice display, but it does not have touch functionality. Next is the payload. These gimbals are quite different in size and what they can actually handle in terms of what you're balancing on top of the gimbal is a little bit different as well. June did a really good job on their website. They don't necessarily say how much weight each one can handle. They kind of more so go off of combination of cameras and lenses. And on their website, they really did a great job of saying, here's the exact camera with the exact lens that it can support. And after reviewing that myself, I've identified that the Crane M3S cannot handle most full frame cameras with large zoom lenses on them. It can handle a full frame camera with a smaller prime or a much smaller zoom. Whereas the Weeble 3S can handle almost every single full frame camera like the Sony a7 IV with a 24 to 70 2.8 G Master lens, that big girthy lens, it can handle that as well. So there's a pretty big difference between what these gimbals can actually support in terms of camera combat. Combinations. But again, check the website. Vertical shooting. The Weeble 3S is the only one of the two that technically has native vertical shooting mode. The Crane 3S can go into vertical mode, but the handle is still horizontal. So you have to kind of hold it in an awkward way. You can take the tripod mount and mount it in that quarter inch thread and then have at least a handle that's going to support something vertical, but it's a little bit cumbersome. The Weeble 3S can do vertical mode, but you actually have to take the camera out and flip it over and reattach it. It's smooth, but the problem is that you have to rebalance from there. I guess it's not a huge deal if you're planning on shooting a lot of vertical and you don't have to switch between horizontal and vertical rapidly. I can see if you have to switch between them frequently that taking the camera out, remounting, rebalancing can be a little bit annoying. So Weeble 3S does technically have a nice vertical mode, but switching between horizontal and vertical could be a little bit better. Quick release plates. The Crane M3S does have a quick release system and it's pretty nice. The only issue is that that mounting plate that connects 
next to the camera is not Arca Swiss compatible, which is the majority of type of tripods and other connections that we're gonna need. So a bit of a downfall there. The Weeble 3S, I wouldn't say it has any quick release system really at all. The Manfrotto big sliding plate, you can take that off pretty quickly, but if you want an Arca Swiss compatible plate, you can connect your Arca Swiss plate on top of the Manfrotto plate, which is then connected to the camera. And you have to detach all of that when you wanna get the camera off of that Manfrotto plate, so not great there. Cost difference, not talking the combo kits here, just the base cost difference. The Crane M3S runs for 199 US dollars at the time of making this video, and the Weeble 3S is 219. And the last main difference that I see is just attachments. Crane M3S is pretty bare bones, which is not a bad thing, but the Weeble 3S does have some wrist support and telescoping like underslung mode attachment, which you can get in the combo kit. That's a really nice feature to have, but between the two, attachment wise, like wrist support and underslung mode, the Weeble 3S has those, whereas the Crane M3S does not. Let's hop out of the studio and go put these gimbals to work. Okay, a bit of a scene change here for this live footage test. I'm about to go through a walking test and a running test with each gimbal, but if you wanna download the clip of what we're about to go through. I'll put a link down below that we can get a closer look and see how these gimbals are performing. The Crane M3S will have the Sony ZV-E1 with the Tamron 17 to 28 F2.8, which is a smaller and lighter setup, which is gonna fit well for that smaller gimbal. But the Weeble 3S will have the Sony A7 IV with the Tamron 28 to 75 F2.8. I think that's a good comparison because the Crane M3S is a lot smaller and can handle handle a lot less of a payload than the Weeble 3S. I think that's a good way to go apples to apples for how these gimbals are going to perform. Both lenses will be at 28 millimeters. We're shooting in 24 frames a second. And I figured that me doing a walking test, I'm following somebody who's walking while I'm walking, followed by a running test, following somebody who's running with me running behind them, is a good way to show a contrast of how these gimbals are going to perform. And our model today is going to be my girlfriend, Savannah. I encourage you guys to check out her channel. I'll link that right over here, right over there. I'll link that down there. Anything fitness related. She's our model today. Y'all can, uh, can enjoy the view, but let's get into it. If you're getting something from this video, let me know by giving it a tap on the thumbs up. And while you're down there in the comments, let me know which gimbal you're leaning towards and what you're gonna be shooting with it. Right before I tell you which gimbal between these two you should get, I do wanna mention a few things that just generally could be better. First, the balancing experience on the Crane M3S isn't great. It's doable and it's functional, but it's not a great experience. It's a little bit sticky to make those tweaks and the amount of space you have to move it to get it to balance perfectly is like millimeters. I think this gimbal would have benefited a lot from just tiny little cranks to have little notches to change the actual balancing setting because sliding it, especially when it's sticky, you go too far and you try to go back and you go too far the other direction. It's not great, a little bit cumbersome, but it is functional. I do think that both of these gimbals need a quick release system that's compatible with an Arca Swiss style plate. It's not great to have to change your plates all the time if you wanna go from your tripod back over to your gimbal. There's some hacks you can do with different attachments it's gonna make balancing a little bit tricky if you start adding a bunch of plates to it. Both of these gimbals, in contrast to other brands, are priced really competitively. I do think that you are gonna get some of the downfalls that I just mentioned when it comes to user experience but you're also saving a good amount of money, again, compared to some other gimbals. But they get the job done here, and I think you are getting a lot of value for the cost. They're a little bit clunky, they're not as intuitive as I'd like them to be, but they're gonna stabilize the footage. And I have to give June some credit here for innovating gimbals. They've done that, they've proven to do that over time, and they're continuing to do it now. So, which one should you get? As I mentioned earlier, the decision wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. The Crane M3S is a tiny form factor, it's really packable, it's really light, and it is quite impressive the size of cameras that you can actually mount on that tiny gimbal. And the Weeble 3S, the footage is smooth, it's compact, does have its downfalls, but I think it's an overall quite solid performer. I would get the Weeble 3S. It's only $20 more and I think you're getting a lot for that $20. And besides the slight price increase, the only real negative here is the size. But I really don't think that the Weeble 3S is that much bigger or that much heavier 
than something like the Crane M3S, especially on the Weeble 3S. If you take off the wrist attachment and the underslung grip, take that away, gimbal, tripod attachment, that is very packable and negligible in contrast, at least what I've found in moving it around and packing it up, negligible in contrast to the M3S. M3S is still a great gimbal and a lot of people might get it because like it's light, I can hold it for longer. I'm just not seeing that. I think at the end of the day, you're still holding a camera with an additional attachment like a gimbal out in front of your body and you're gonna tire out. So I don't think the main difference there is worth it. Especially considering that at some point, maybe you have a smaller camera now and a smaller lens, something like a crop sensor APS-C. If you upgrade someday to full frame, maybe a bigger lens, you're gonna want your gimbal to be able to support that. There are people out there that like the Crane M3S and I can see why. It's a really interesting offer. But for those reasons, I'm going with Weeble 3S. Gimbals can be an amazing way to level up your videos. You know who's constantly leveling up their photos and videos? Subscribers to this channel. They're also ridiculously attractive people. Subscribe for more videos just like this one. I'd love to have you a part of this channel. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See ya.